Bitcoin is in a very critical zone right now. And I know I've been saying this for the past week or so, but I think it's even more true right now today than it was back here when I started saying it. And that's that in the short term, it is much more likely we see Bitcoin break downwards rather than upwards. And I can explain why, right? This is based on things that you and I can see. Like here, we can see that right now Bitcoin is being wound up in a downwards trend, tighter and tighter, very close to bottom, which is very similar to what we saw in 2018 when we saw Bitcoin being wound up tighter and tighter, closer and closer to the $6,000 bottom. Now, back then it took 11 months, but eventually we reached a point where we just got wound up so tight. I'm talking about between major levels of support, major levels of resistance. If you combine that with the low volume we were seeing at that time, we just got wound up so tight, eventually we broke down. On November 8th, Bitcoin flashed crashed, losing 50% of its value. We broke down to 3,700. We had a dead cat bounce up to 4,200. And on December 16th, we found a new year bottom at 3,100, bouncing off the 200 week moving average. Now, since then, we have never been able to rally back above 4,200. We've tried, we've tested a couple, a few different times. We've tested 4,200. But as you can see here, each time we've seen lower highs, boom, 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 and lower lows, boom, 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 boom. And as we continue to slide more and more in this downtrend, Bitcoin, again, it's being wound up tighter and tighter near the bottom. If we combine this with the fact that, to me, the volume doesn't look that strong, I think it's very probable we're about to break downwards. On the other hand, you are living through history. You can tell your grandkids about this because we are now living through the longest bear market on record for Bitcoin, 411 days and counting. Well, hey, is it possible that where we are right now could be the bottom? I mean, we're 411 days into this bear market. Isn't it possible? What are we, 85% corrected from where we were at the top? Isn't it possible this bear market is over? Yeah, it's possible. As I said, I don't think it's probable. But what we do have going for us is this 200-week moving average. This is a very critical moving average. And you can see we bounced off of it at 3,100. And we're probably going to retest it over here at 3,200. Something is going to happen here. And you can quote me on that. But you don't need me to tell you. You can see this for yourself. You can see us getting tighter and tighter into this downwards wedge, very close to bottom. Let me tell you. If Bitcoin closes below the 200 week moving average and spends any significant time there, that would be a very bearish sign, in my opinion. And on the other hand, on the other hand, if we rally up above to 4,200 and we close above 4,200 and spend any significant time there, that would be a very bullish sign. Those are the facts. And if we crash again, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a long candlestick down that closes near the top and then consistent greater volume after that. That's what I'm looking for. That would tell me possibly accumulation phase is on. Besides, besides, if the price falls, if the price of Bitcoin continues to fall, I mean, at this point, I just see it as a buying opportunity, right? I mean, we've been coming at you for the past year, showing you all the green flags in the market. We're about to talk about Fidelity. I want to talk about the ETF being refiled. I want to talk about Coinbase and a certain US state. But all this stuff that we've been talking about since the very beginning, to me, that suggests that cryptocurrency is not going to die in 2019. To me, that suggests that this is going to be something that continues to grow bigger in 2020, 2021, 22, 23, if not for decades. I mean, come on, Fidelity Investments, they're one of the biggest in the game. What, are, are they in on the Ponzi? Yeah, right. Fidelity says its crypto trading and storage platform is in final testing. Financial service provider Fidelity, which has some $7.2 trillion in client assets under management, said Thursday that its anticipated crypto trading and custody platform is in its final testing phase. The company noted in a blog post late Thursday that it has onboarded a select set of eligible clients already while it works on building Fidelity Digital Asset Services, FDAS. Now, this was first announced, first announced they were launching a digital asset service last October. At present, the company is working with auditors to polish its existing policies and procedures, as well as to set new benchmarks for this aspect of cryptographic and blockchain-based finance. 
Now, the big question is, when is this going to launch? We heard 2019, right? Well, there's no firm time frame set. This is good news, this story right here, final testing. But if we, if we pull some of the other information that we've learned in these past few months, if we take a look at a Bloomberg report, as well as what's consistent with the company's earliest statements saying that they wanted to go live first quarter, it is very possible, probably even probable, that this will launch in March of this year at the very end of the first quarter. Well, wait a second. What if it doesn't launch? What if like backed or like this uh, ETF? What if it just gets pulled again? If it does, that's fine because I hope this is not just one company doing this. As you can see, a lot of different companies, as you can see, a lot of different institutions are looking to get into cryptocurrency. And the fact that some of them have to, you know, reschedule or pull their application then reapply, that's fine because eventually this is going to happen. And you can see that nobody really wants to be the first one in, but you better believe that none of these guys are going to be the last one in. And we will see FOMO among institutions as well. But just so you know, the ETF was refiled. The seemingly never-ending ETF application has been resubmitted by the CBOE. The SEC now has 240 more days from the published date to make a decision, taking us all the way to October. Look, it doesn't matter to me when this gets launched. The fact is many companies, many different institutions are trying to do this, and that is a big green flag for me. Next up, this is very short. It's just, you know, we're still in this bear market. Yet despite that, since October... Coinbase's web traffic has been in an uptick. Now, that doesn't apply to every single exchange, but Coinbase is the exchange of the people. Next up, Wyoming passes bill to recognize cryptocurrency as money. So I told you about this, that it was potentially going to get passed. It was submitted. Well, guess what? Now it's passed. In the United States, the state of Wyoming passes a bill that will allow for cryptocurrencies to be recognized as money on January 31st according to the state legislator website. So this just happened. On January 18th, Wyoming legislation presented the bill, which would help to clarify the classification of cryptocurrency. The proposed bill also authorizes banks to provide custodial services for digital assets consistent with this section upon providing 60 days written notice to the commissioner. The bill will go in effect March 1st, at the very end of Q1. So hopefully, many states follow this. That's the cool thing about being in America. States can pass their own laws, make their own bills, and then hopefully this gets recognized on a federal level. Final thing I want to show you before we check out our Twitter, and I guess this really isn't a story, but Bitcoin Magazine, which we sometimes pull articles from, if you wanted to actually get... Bitcoin magazine in print for like a coffee table type book. They're getting ready for a new print edition of Bitcoin magazine and it's mostly Bitcoin information, has some crypto information in general. This would be a good talking piece. It'd be a real slick thing to have on your coffee table. And that's it for me today, my friends. This is Aaron at Altcoin Daily. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe for our daily crypto content, keeping you updated on everything going on in the crypto space. If you found value in this video, give it a like. And if you want to stick around, let's just hang out. We'll take a look at cryptocurrency market cap and or coinmarketcap.com rather. And we'll take a look at our Twitter. Who follows us at Altcoin Daily IO? Many people do, 3,000 of you of our select few subscribers. But if you do uh, pop on over to our Twitter real quick, you can see some of the stuff that we tweet. Um, <clears throat> this is pretty cool. So the, the Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey, who's also the president of Square and the Cash app, uh, was on the Joe Rogan Experience recently, and he talked about Bitcoin. The internet will have a currency, and it's Bitcoin. I'll I'd play you the clip, but we'd get taken down. So come on over to our Twitter. Check out this clip. It's what I like to see. Also, sometimes we post the funny memes when I give my children my Bitcoin private key in 20 years. You go sell these and buy yourself a nice spaceship. Yes, I like that. We had a recent retweet. Fed chair talking about the 22 trillion US debt. I'm very worried about it, 
But from the Fed's standpoint, the long-run fiscal non-sustainability of the U.S. federal government isn't really something that plays into our policy decisions by Bitcoin. All right. Let's take a quick look at coinmarketcap.com. We can see that Bitcoin's dominance has been rising very slightly within the past few months. We're now at 53.3%. I'm sure it's hard to see Bitcoin rise in dominance when we get altcoins being printed every single day. But besides that, if we take a look at some of the higher caps, XRP right now is at 30 cents. Will it drop below 25 cents? What do you guys think? We've got Ethereum barely above $100. We have EOS at 234. Bitcoin Cash barely above $100. Tether now number six. Litecoin 33. Man, the lowest these have ever been at, right? Except for Tron. Tron is pretty high. Certainly not the highest. I think it's all time high it was 21 cents. That was unbelievable. Stellar at 8 cents. <laughs> I remember when Stellar was holding on to 21 cents for quite some time. Oh, Bitcoin SV, that's my favorite one. Cardano, three cents. I'm kind of waiting for Cardano to get down to one cent because if Cardano can get down to one cent, then I, just my, psychologically I think, oh, well, I can easily see the gains in my head as we get up to 25 cents or a dollar. Got Monero at 43, Whew, man. Dash, 67. USD coin. I actually have some USD coin or whatever Coinbase's native stable coin is. I bought some USD coin recently on Coinbase because as you know, if you, as you know if you buy the stable coin on Coinbase, then you don't get charged a fee. And I moved that stable coin onto Coinbase Pro, which is Coinbase's free exchange. So as soon as we see a drop in price, I'm going to I have a buy order ready. I'm ready to pull the trigger. All right. I guess that's it for me, my friends. Cheers. Follow us on Twitter. Tweet at us. We'll be responding.